my real question was, um, as a comedian, as someone who's insanely creative, do you get uh, annoyed ever seeing people kind of jack your style recently, whether it be with the video editing that you do, uh, the style, or do you just not care? Opposite. It's the highest form of flattery. Okay. the highest form of flattery. I was so broke when I sold my show and so ready to quit comedy. I never thought I would have my own show or my own house or anything that, like, I am um, I'm so flattered by by all that stuff. I, I, I'm, I'm buddies with Matt Groening, who created The Simpsons, and he said when The Simpsons started, it was this huge phenomenon, and people started making, making those, like, homemade Bart Simpson t-shirts and the Black Bart t-shirts and all that stuff. And Fox at first was like, should we like stop cease and desist? And he's like, no, let that shit spread like wildfire. People are invested into it. He's like, I love like the knockoff t-shirts and the fake toy. He would go down to Tijuana and get like knockoff Bart Simpson toys. He's like, that's the highest form of flattery. And that shows how invested people, this is like 1989, 1990, 91. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you know, 30, 35 years ago, he was like, that's the best sign. That's like a positive omen for the show. That means that the show is going to be a hit. Mm-hmm. And here we are. They're on episode 702, yeah. you know, and they're worth $2 billion. So, um, yeah, to answer your question, no, I love that. I it, encourage it. I'm like so flattered you, by that. You can definitely see your you have influenced a lot of people, too. Like you can see. And I'm influenced, you know, I'm with some of my influences, too. I love, you know, like you can tell I, I, I love Tom Green. I love Jackass. I love Chappelle's show. I love Ali G show. Ren and Stimpy, Beavis and Butthead, Simpsons, Wonder Chosen. Like, I'm just uh, uh, an amalgamation of my influences, too. So we all, we're all, we all, you know, experiencing the same world. That's a good attitude to have. Like, like let people do their knockoff versions because at the end of the day, it's just going to remind people of you. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I, I, like, shout out. As long as people aren't, like, being mean or malicious or... Well, I'm curious about... You know, the- I think, like, if, they, if, they're, if their intentions are pure, then, like... More power to them. How, how, so that was another question I had was, how are you able to, that fine line, because you see it now with everyone trying to get famous on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, wherever it may be, prank videos, uh, where they just come, they fall flat because they're mean or they're, you know, you watch it and you're like, what the fuck is going on here? Why, why'd this guy just go punch like an old lady and say it's just a prank? Right, right, right. So how are you able to find that subtle line that makes it funny? Well, it's hard. You never want to be mean. You never want it to be mean spirited or come from a place of uh, malice. Um, you just want it to. That's not what a prank is about. A prank is about cramming absurdity into reality and distorting the truth until you like short circuit somebody's brain. Mm-hmm. You you want you want somebody to be pinwheeling. You don't want them like you're not. I'm not trying to ruin somebody's day ever. So when I'm in character or the characters I take on in the show or what we did with the hidden camera prank movie, like I'm always, um, my, my, my character's always like going into a situation earnestly, not like, ha ha, check this out. I'm going to fuck with this person. Right. Like the character is usually like a sad sack. Like I have a bit where I, I go on the New York city subway with a neutered dog cone and I have fruit loops glued to like a spandex outfit. And I enter the subway. We did this for real, hitting camera prank. And I, I went to the whole train. I go, ladies and gentlemen, I have bad news. I did not get the job at Fruit Loops. My body is now your communion. Please eat from me. And I pour milk in the dog cone and I'm passing out spoons. And Fruit Loops are flying everywhere. Milk is flying everywhere. But that character is a sad sack that's going through a hard time. He didn't get the job at Fruit Loops. And he's now sacrificing his his body to the people. He's not being mean. He earnestly is going through right. the melodramatic shit. So if you play it earnestly and dramatically, and you don't, you actually, the opposite of comedy is playing the joke. You want to like play the drama in the situation, and the more dramatic you play something, the more funny it is. So I, I think that's the key. You don't want you don't want your like characters to ever be like nanny nanny boo boo fuck you i'm punk rock and, right you know, like, H- have you ever watched uh a uh, hidden camera prank back and been like "Ooh, that didn't that didn't that looks different than how i imagine it that seems mean oh yeah that's all the time i mean like you're constantly rewriting rehearsing rewriting rehearsing shooting it reevaluating it 
potentially reshooting it, editing it, the edit doesn't feel good, or a part feels mean, you're lifting out a part that felt mean that you didn't mean for it to be mean. So you're constantly reassessing and refining until it feels funny. But it's a, it's a process. It's not, it doesn't happen overnight. That's another problem with like a lot of like YouTube pranksters. They're like, they're not like conscious of that in the editing bay. They just like film it, they edit it. It's just like you're watching the raw footage and it doesn't feel good, you know? Has it been tougher now that you have a bit of notoriety, more people know who you are, to have guests on your show that you can genuinely prank or shock while yeah, they're getting, on the show? Getting guests, yeah, getting guests in the studio this fifth season was was challenging, but we just avoid the demographic. We usually bring in people that are over 40. <laughs> That's a big thing. Like not a lot of people over 40 know who the fuck I am. And then in the streets, I did like a body change for season five. I like picked my head bald. I gained 20 pounds. I spray tanned every day and went in these tanning beds every day. Um, I uh, bleached my teeth and shaved my facial hair. I waxed my pubic hair. I got rid of all my body hair except my eyebrows. So I like, I look like, um, like a bloated Vin Diesel, like when Vin Diesel like takes off between the Fast and the Furious movies and he just mm -hmm. starts drinking again yeah. and he gets all bloated. Like that's kind of what I, that's kind of what I look like for this season. And he sings like, karaoke oh. to himself. Those videos are my favorite Vin Diesel. when he's. What? Just I haven't seen that. Oh my God. You got like, he's just standing. I think it's in his house in front of a big projector singing karaoke to no one. It's he's incredible, so <laughs> like really sad songs too. Uh, he's really good. Dude, yeah, he's making that Fast and the Furious money, dude. He's so rich. Yeah, he's it's Rih his mind. Rihanna's stay was the one that I remember was like, wow, Vin Diesel really, he's really letting it, letting his heart out there. I don't know. I think he just had a karaoke phase. He loves That's karaoke. Amazing. You gotta send me those videos. That sounds incredible. All right, yeah, just hit, shoot me your number. Um, yeah, it's uh, uh, nine one seven. <laughs> Uh, do you, how many people, if it, let's say there's just for, just for a round number, let's say there's a million people that know Eric Andre, how many of those people know you just because your gifts are unbelievable and you've become such a integral part of social media now? You know, that's, I, I can't even take ownership of that. That's just like, those were created by the people. I didn't make those. So thank, thank God whoever made those. That's like, that's like keeping my career alive right now. So uh, I can't take credit for that. Thank you for whoever's making those. Yeah. The the let me in White House, the why would you say something so bold? And then the um, shooting Hannibal Burris. Yeah, those are like, if you, those probably are used, those are probably top 10 that are gifts used. It's that and maybe Denzel Washington every time someone trends and they're like, ooh, thought this person died. Ooh. Denzel Washington, no, he didn't. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Thank you, Reddit. Thank every subreddit. I, I like thank you, people. The like the the public has spoken. That's like the uh, Bart Simpson T-shirt of my my work, I guess. Yes, yeah. yes. Like it's keeping it going because it took a while to film the movie, and then the movie is going to come out in April, and then quarantine happens, and that's coming out on Netflix. So like, I had to take three and a half, four years off between seasons. And then we had to film the special. I had to tour the special. So it's been a while since I put anything out. So that's why I got a bunch of shit coming out this year. Um, so those memes like kept my career alive. <laughs> so yeah. God bless Reddit um, and Instagram. When you were at the RNC in 2016, I was yeah. there and I was trying to get up close to Alex Jones. You somehow got up to him. There was like a he big. He me up on stage. How... I was being pushed back by the crowd. And then he was like, bring the Daily Show guy up here. And I was like, I don't know what Daily Show, he's Wyatt Cinec, Trevor Noah, but thank God he thinks I'm the guy on the Daily Show. And he's like, bring him up here. What do you want to talk about, Libtard? You know, he had like... Were you... Infowars.com, Infowars.gov, Infowars.gov, buy my vitamins. Prisonplanet.tv, I got all the documents. Yeah. Prisonplanet.tv, I got the documents. I got the emails right here, and they're turning the frogs gay. <laughs> were, you, were you a little bit fr afraid in that scenario? Because that crowd... I'll put it this way. That was not the most welcoming crowd for anybody. It was, it was, it was actually bikers for Trump. And there was a lot of alt-right guys there. They hadn't won the election yet. So they weren't as empowered as they are now, but it was an open carry state. So a lot of those guys were armed. And I knew it was terrifying, but I knew I was getting some of the best footage of my career. So I was, my mind was split. My mind was, I'm scared for my life, but I'm getting some of the best footage ever. So I just have to commit. And then I just like got in the zone when I was up there. He's like, 
you're, you're the guy from the Daily Show. I was like, I'm not the guy from the Daily Show. I'm from MySpace. He's like, all right, what do we want to talk about? I was like, here's my hotel key. I want you to fuck my wife. And he's like, all right, all right, all right well, hold up now. <laughs> he's like, but what hotel room is she in? 